In today's session, we'll spend some time to understand first terminology, prerequisites, dependencies, groupings, and some tasks. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, we are not configuring. First, we have to understand the differences between terminologies and the grouping part. And one tricky part in, in tricky part in benefits is most of the tasks sounds very similar. Okay, most of the task sounds very, very similar. So we should be little alertive in understanding the task. However, if you have any questions, kindly please uh, flag it. it, will help you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any way for you to uh, make the screen a little bit larger? Uh, actually, I am on this. Okay, just a second. I think from your side, you have to maximize the screen, but let me see if I can do that. I mean, 100%, but is it better uh yeah actually i can i can do that a little bit here i just realized that okay That's, yeah. yeah that works thank you no problem sir okay first let's see what are the types of benefit plans we have we have two types of benefit plans one is monetary another one is non-monetary monetary means employer will give the benefit plan in the form of amount example let's say uh, an employee is eligible for a metro train ticket every month company is giving 500 us dollars for that employee for uh, accessing this metro train so here they're giving the money in the form of money and that employee is taking and buying the metro non-monetary means Let's say employee has sick and he joined in a hospital. He's hospitalized for few, for a week. The employer is going to be provide the benefit. I mean, amount of all hospital related charges through a vendor called let's say a healthcare vendor. Here, employee not getting any money in hand, but what are the expenses incurred for his recovery is taken care by the employee. This is non monetary. Our work application can accommodate both of the requirements, monetary, non-monetary. First, we'll, and then let me take you to another screen. Hmm. Okay, what are the types of benefit plans we have? In Workday, we have around six types of benefit plans. Healthcare, health savings account, spending account, insurance, retirement savings, additional. Different customers may have different types of requirements. Our uh, workday payment plans should match all the requirements. All the requirements we should. Let's see uh, what are each type of plan we have. Healthcare, which means medical, dental, vision so most of the employers will offer this benefits to an employees right that falls under health care benefits sponsored by employer or together employee employer so these are classified into six types or you can say categorize this benefit plan into six types okay vision medical dental and if any health care related will falls under here hsa Spending account, or you can also call both together flexible spending account, savings account, spending account. These two are dedicated to USA because in USA we have a mandatory benefit called flexible spending account. So these two are dedicatedly for USA. If you are implementing for USA, then you require you may require to configure benefit plans under these two categories. Healthcare globally applicable. Most of the countries and employers they're offering some of the benefit plans for their employees okay so let's talk about these two health savings account there might be employee can purchase some health savings account purchase in the sense here employee will contribute employer also will contribute these are offered by employer but this plan employee has to contribute for example per year employee has to contribute around 500 dollars employer also will contribute $500, total $1,000. And 
and this thousand dollars will be paid to the benefit provider let's say metlife is a benefit provider healthcare provider so employee employer both they will pay to the uh, metlife and if employee is fall sick or any risk kind of accidents etc they can uh, claim with the vendor metlife okay spending account also savings account unforeseen uh, what you call uh, unexpected reason sometimes any critical conditions accidents more amount to the required additionally you can also contribute to spending account so here one thing some employers may allow only health savings or spending account either one not both some employers may allow to employees to choose both of the plans okay both of the plans in health savings account not only employee employee also can enroll the dependents children spouse or parents okay they mean to the health savings plans and also coming to the health savings and spending account there will be an upper limit as per the norms the contribution should not go beyond that upper limit so we have to create certain rules on that okay and this means then initial coverages if if for example an employee uh, long term disability short term disability employee debt three things normally will consider long term short term disability uh, let me give one example to make it more. we have std stands for the benefit term okay? short term disability ltd stands for long term disability death let's say an employee get an accident and he has to get an accident and it may takes one month or two months to recover we will call it a short term disability so short term disability means employee let's say met an accident and employee needs some time to recover one month two months or three months in this three months if the employee has opt in for this insurance plan company may offer some amount okay company may offer some amount so that he can survive in this three months until he will recover at the same time company may also take care of uh, the employee health care related issues amounts whatever long term disability means uh, it's a long term let's say uh, leg was broken he cannot walk further a hand has been uh, Uh, broken he can't move the hand for a long term then the employee will get continuous uh, amount uh, up to some years it depends again to the customers it's not a standard okay so that falls under long term disability and then death sometimes employees uh, is unexpected things unexpected things death right so in that case what happens is employee will get some lump sum amount i will show one simple calculation how it works let's take the long term disability company wants to offer if any em- oh sorry i have a message oh you can't hear me uh from my side i think uh, networks are good sir but i can see you are uh, can you please rejoin quickly possible thank you so long term disability Uh, as i said employee met uh, any hand or leg or anything uh, one of the organ or he lost the visibility anything uh, risk have okay let's see a simple formula for how the long term disability companies will offer let's say a company wants to give uh, long term disability coverage this way multiply by five times what does it mean by multiply by 5 uh, we can call it a base pay multiply by 5 so that means coverage assume an employee base pay is 10000 us dollars per month sorry per annum multiply by 5 50000 us dollars employee will get the coverage if anything happened to an employee long term disability so company will offer this much amount this number is just a sample example i'm showing in real time this number can be anything can be more than this or lesser than this okay or maybe 
based on different types of components as well. So this much amount employee may get in lump sum or maybe on periodical basis employee will get this amount. Similarly, if any risk happened to the employee death, okay, then some of the lump sum amount, whatever they promised or employee eligible for coverage, employee will receive, employee, employee in the sense, employee dependents will receive that lump sum amount. This kind of plans will fall under insurance. Okay. And then retirement savings. Retirement savings is, I, I hope you might be well aware. So you might be contributing already for 401k, 401k pension plans, PF, for example, in UK, in USA, we have 401k, UK, we have pension, India, we have provident fund. So in different countries, you will call different terms. These are retirement savings. So there are conditional, which means employee has to reach certain age to get this amount. Our employee has to show some evidence. He's really required some amount can be, he wants to construct a new home or, um, or one of his kids marriage or any risk health issues they can claim this amount so what happens in the retirement savings amount employee employer will contribute some amount both has to be contributed and there's country in some countries there will be a limit for that if you say in 2022 the new irs norms around the two around twenty thousand plus dollars twenty thousand greater than twenty thousand dollars employee can contribute towards the benefit plans, right? So it has to obey the legal rules also. So how to create, we will discuss. And then additional plans. Additional plans means something like uh, pet insurance or uh, metro train ticket, cafeteria, uh, like a cafeteria, what do you call? Cafeteria benefit, gym, uh, gym payment for employee. Some employers will give benefits to their employees or mobile purchase amount. These are all falls under additional. These are not on the person, these are completely on the, some kind of objects additionally giving to the employees. Some employers, they will pay healthcare related benefits. Healthcare in the sense of uh, gym membership. They may give some vouchers, Amazon vouchers, if the project goes successfully. Okay, such things will fall under additional benefit plans. Here, apart from this, we don't have any other benefit plan types. We have to clearly understand the customer requirement. Based on that, we have to think that benefit plan will fit under which type of benefit plan, whether it will fit under healthcare, it will fit under additional, it will fit under insurance. This analysis we have to perform and we have to select the right coverage. Type. So anyhow, this as I mentioned, an overview, we are going to create each and every object from tomorrow. Okay, we'll start from here. Now, these are the plan types. Okay, so classification. Next, if I would like to create a benefit plan, what is the dependencies? What are all prerequisites, prerequisites I need? That we will see. Okay, so benefit plan. If you want to create a benefit plan, make sure these objects must be created first. If you want to get a benefit plan, you must set up all these components. We will call it as, let's call it as components. All these components must be configured. Let's talk what are all these components. Providers. Provider means who is offering this benefit plan. So we have MetLife, Aviva, and uh, Sunlam, etc. These are all insurance, I mean, benefit plan providers, correct? These people are called providers. Whenever, for example, uh, let's say I have joined in a hospital and around uh, uh, $5,000 are required to treat. Okay. Now, since I already have healthcare plan, who is going to pay that $5,000? My employer or my benefit provider? Any idea, sir? Employer will pay or provider will pay? That would be paid if, so there's, I mean, the cost of having the benefit that be paid by the employer any medical bill or of that nature will be paid by the provider. Correct. So here, employee, employer together, they will contribute some amount. Depends. Some companies will, will only employer will do. Some companies yes. employer may require to do. They will pay to the providers. Provider is assured 
yes i will take care of your employee if employee feels ill or he is uh, not healthy so he may require to give some proof of documents so there will be some limit also to providers so that provider first you have to configure sir. who is the provider for this health care who is the provider for this health service so the provider details first you have to configure and then coverage target who is covered under this plan when i say health care employee only employee plus spouse employee plus spouse plus children employee plus spouse plus children plus parents it depends again how the provider and employer offering the benefits some companies they will give benefits only to the employee some companies they will give the coverage only to the employee plus spouse or employee plus spouse plus children okay if you want to include your parents then you may require to pay some additional amount it depends right the cost is different so how it how it works is only employee contribution is from employee <coughs> let's say 25 dollars employee plus spouse contribution is 35 dollars employee plus spouse plus child $45. Employee plus spouse, spouse plus child plus parents $60. So there the contributions will keep changing based on whom who you are enrolling into the benefit plan. These are nothing but coverage targets. Who is your target coverage? Your only spouse, or your children, your parents, or only you? That is nothing but coverage targets. Okay. Then benefit coverage type. What do you mean by coverage type here? Coverage type means this one. This benefit plan is part of which coverage type? Healthcare, health savings, spending, insurance, retirement assistance. This also we have to configure when you're creating benefit plan prior to that. And then benefit group or eligibility rule. Who is eligible for this benefit plan? Only employees working in USA are eligible, or only working working employees in USA plus employee must be full time, not part time, are eligible. Only employee in USA plus full time plus regular employee only eligible, not continuous. These we can create through this eligibility rules and benefit group eligibility rules. In turn. To make it simple, it will define who is eligible for the plan. Okay, who is eligible for the plan. And then after rates. What is the rate? How much the employer employee has to be contributed? Just now we discussed here this amount, right? These are the targets. This is the rate $45, $35, $25, $60. Okay, the rates also we need to be configured. That is they also required before you confirm in the benefit plan. Then after plan year definition. So when you are allowing your employee to enroll into the plan in 2022, Jan January 1st to December 31st of 2022, or next year, or mid of the year, or any month specific month, for that we will maintain the plan year definition, one of the most key important components. In fact, all are important. This is more important. Okay, here we specify. So from when these benefit plans will be available for these employees. Okay, here we'll specify the date, month, and year. And then cross plan dependencies. So most interesting and important. There might be cases. Cross plan dependencies mean, let's say I have benefit plan A and I have benefit plan B okay one customer will tell if any employee enrolling into the benefit plan a it's mandatory that employee has to enroll into the benefit plan b let me repeat 
if any employee enrolling into the benefit plan a and it is mandatory that employee has to enroll into the benefit plan b that is one second scenario if any employee enrolling into the benefit plan a employee should not allow to enroll into benefit plan b okay if any employee enrolled into benefit plan a should not be enrolled into benefit plan b this is second scenario okay if it is first scenario you are allowing you are allowing employee to choose both the plans mandatorily second scenario you are allowing employee either of the plan to choose that is nothing but cross plan dependency these two scenarios we can achieve with this setup sir so any questions on this slide so a good example would be if you in us uh 